Okay, this is a titration um, problem that's going to be continued from today. And so what we have is we have a titration involving a, a um, weak acid, which is our acetic acid. And titrating into that acetic acid, we have a strong base. And so in class today, we started this titration. We, we did the initial concentration um, of just the acetic acid to find the initial starting pH. We also added a little bit of... Um, sodium hydroxide to it and found the pH. So now what we're going to be asked to do is calculate the number of milliliters of sodium hydroxide needed to get to the equivalence point. Now remember that the equivalence point is when you have equal number of moles of the hydrogen ion and equal number of moles of the hydroxide ion. So that's what we're looking for for our equivalence point. And so what we're going to do first is um, we're going to calculate using molarity, the molarity formula, of the number of moles of um, our uh, acetic acid that we have. So we have a 0.1 molar solution and then we have 50 mils of it so it's going to be 50 milliliters divided by a thousand and we're going to use that to calculate the number of moles. And so the number of moles that we get are 5.0 times 10 to the negative third moles of acetic acid. Now, now that is going to be equal to 5.0 times 10 to the negative third moles of our hydroxide ion coming from the sodium hydroxide. So those number of moles are equal because it is at the equivalence point. That's what that's defined as. And so we can use this idea, reusing the molarity formula, molarity equals moles per liter, um, because we're being asked to calculate the number of milliliters. And so let's, let's solve this for liters. Liters is equal to moles over molarity. Now, we just found that the molarity, or the moles, is 5.0 times 10 to the negative third moles for the hydroxide. And it gives us, up in the beginning of the problem, it gives us our molarity, which is um, 0.1 molar. And it's not always 0.1 molar, but in this case it is. So I'm going to go 0 0.1 molar. And then I'm just going to divide those two. And that gives um, me an answer in liters. And then I'm going to multiply that answer in liters by a thousand and I get 50 milliliters. And that's that's uh, the answer there. Once again, when you divide these two, you won't get 50, but that is in liters. And so again, you gotta multiply that by a thousand to convert it. Okay, now, number four is gonna ask us to calculate the pH of this titration at the equivalence point. So we're gonna use all that data we just did in number three um, to calculate the pH of the titration. So. Um, we're going to write the balanced equation once again, net ionic, and remember um, we don't ionize a weak, a weak acid, so there's um, our acetic acid, we do ionize our, our uh, sodium hydroxide solution, sodium is going to be our spectate iron, um, we're going to form water, and we're also going to form the acetate ion, just like that. And what we're going to do is do that before, both before and after table. And so, um, once again, at the equivalence point, we had the number of moles being 5.0 times 10 to the negative third for the acetic acid and for the, um, the hydroxide. So we're going to have 5.0 times 10 to the negative third, 5.0 times 10 to the negative third there. Now, obviously, we're going to be subtracting the smallest, but they're both the same. And so we're not going to have any um, hydroxide, and we've consumed all of the acetate ion. Um, we're not worried about water at all, but what we do have is we have an addition of 5.0 times 10 to the negative third over here, 5.0 times 10 to the negative third there as well. So really, the only thing that will be present in the water is some of the acetate ion. Now hopefully you remember that an, an, an ion um, can react with water to produce some results and some changes in pH. The ions that do not react with water, as we said before, were those ions that were conjugates of strong acids or bases. So if you were a strong acid, whatever the conjugate ion um, or your conjugate base was does not affect pH, like chloride or bromide or iodide. Or, or if you had a strong base, um, the conjugate acid, like um, sodium, potassium, rubidium, calcium, strontium, barium, and so on, um, those guys do not affect pH, so this does affect pH. So, here's what we're going to do. We're going to do something else. First, 
first let's before we jump into our new ice table let's recalculate the molarity of this because remember this is moles and so we're going to recalculate the molarity and in this problem we had titrated 50 mils plus 50 mils so we have 100 mils and we're going to divide that by 1,000 mils to turn it into liters to get our molarity here. And our molarity comes out to be 0, 0 0.5 molar. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to turn this around and we're going to re-react the acetate ion. And it doesn't really re-react, it's just um, this reaction is occurring at the same time. And in this case, what's going to happen is water is going to act like the acid, forming acetic acid plus the hydroxide ion. Now, um, we're going to ice table this. Now, hopefully you can recognize that if we have that hydroxide ion being produced, one of the things that we will be calculating is pOH, and we're going to need some other information that's really important. So, okay. There's our starting concentration. Starting concentration, 0 0.5 molar. Let's not worry about the water. 0 and 0. And then this reaction, obviously, hopefully you can predict, is going to go to the right. We're going to get plus x, plus x, 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 minus x. It's 0 0.5 minus x. OK. So now what we're going to do is we want to set up our um, equilibrium constant expression. So it's going to be k. B. Now the reason we use KB there, super important, is because we have a hydroxide over here. And we're solving for X, which will essentially be this hydroxide value. So KB is equal to X squared over 0 0.5 minus X. Um, we're going to assume X is small. And so we're just going to delete that off so we don't have to do the quadratic. There we go. Now. Uh, they did not give us KB in this problem, but so that's not a big deal. We can calculate it using the KW formula. And remember, KA multiplied by KB is equal to KW at 25 degrees Celsius. Um, so this is going to be 1.8 times 10 to the negative fifth multiplied by KB is equal to 1.0 times 10 to the negative 14th. And if you're asking yourself, where did you get that value? Remember, KW is always 1.0 times 10 to the negative 14th at 25 degrees Celsius. So we're going to solve that for KB. And so let's go ahead and do that. OK, so KB is going to be equal to 5.56 times 10 to the negative 10th. So I'm going to plug that in here. And I'm going to solve for x. So in this case, x is going to equal. OK, so I get a value of 1.67 times 10 to the negative 5th for x and remember x is equal to um, is equal to our hydroxide ion concentration so if I negative log that I get um, pOH equal to um, 4.78 and I subtract that from 14 and I get a pH equal to 9.22 now this idea is very, very important for this whole thing. Now, what we saw before is we saw um, in a strong acid, strong base titration, we saw a titration curve. Um, let's say we're starting, we're, we have some strong acid, so um, our pH started out really low, like a pH of 1, and then we had an equivalence point, and then we had um, something like that. And we said that our equivalence point um, in a strong acid, strong base titration, our equivalence point was 7. Now, what we just calculated here is a weak acid, strong base titration. And our weak acid, our, um, our, starting, um, our starting pH was a little bit higher. It wasn't down there 1. If I remember right, it was about 3.7 or so might be wrong on that, I'll have to go back and look. But um, our equivalence point actually is 9.22. And so what we see in weak acid strong base titration is we see an equivalence point which is on the basic um, side of things. 
Um, and that's some, one of the big indicators of a weak acid strong base titration is your equivalence point is not at seven, it's gonna be up in the basic range. Essentially, if it asks you um, why is it in the basic range, and it's because you have the presence of that, um, of that conjugate base, that acetate ion, which re-reacts with water to produce a hydroxide, so that's what pushes it up into the basic range. Now, what we're gonna do now is we're gonna go, we're gonna keep adding uh, more of the base and really consume everything. Um, and so we're gonna have an excess of base going on here in, in, number, in number five. So it's gonna ask us to calculate, um, calculate uh, the uh, pH when 60 mils of a 0.1 um, molar sodium hydroxide is added to 50 mils of a 0.1 molar um, acetic acid. So um, let's, do, let's do our balanced equation. I don't know what I'm doing here. I, I don't need that two there. Acetate has a, um, there we go. Plus our hydroxide ion yielding um, water plus the acetate ion. Okay, so we've, we've done most of these calculations already. So let's do a before after table. And so we still know that we st it's gonna be the same 50 mils of a 0.1 molar solution. Um, and we're going to convert that to moles using the molarity formula, so we're going to get 5.0 times 10 to the negative third moles of this. We do have to calculate, though, um, our sodium hydroxide, the number of moles, so we're going to do molarity equals moles per liter. Um, our molarity of our sodium hydroxide here is going to be um, 0 0.1. Our liters is going to be 60 mils divided by 1,000 mils. And so I'm going to get um, the number of moles as 6.0 times 10 to the negative third moles of my hydroxide ion. So I'm going to add that in right here, 6.0 times 10 to the negative third. So we're going to subtract now the lowest, so 5.0 times 10 to the negative third from both sides. And then I'm going to get 1.0 times 10 to the negative third, and I'm going to get zero. Now, you should be recognizing also that we should be adding in 5.0 times 10 to the negative third here and 5.0 times 10 to the negative third here. But really, we can ignore this in this case. So let's go ahead and ignore it. Now, the reason why we can ignore it is our predominant species is our hydroxide ion, which is going to affect pH far greater than the acetate ion will affect pH. So we're just going to calculate our pH based on our hydroxide ion concentration. So um, we're going to recalculate our molarity of our, of our hydroxide ion concentration. Molarity, once again, equals moles per liter. So molarity is equal to 1.0 times 10 to the negative third. Um, total volume now, remember we had um, 60 mils plus 50 mils, and so we have 110 mils divided by 1,000 mils to recalculate that molarity. And um, so we should get 6.0 times 10 to the negative third. Uh, I'm sorry, I was reading the wrong number. That's not the answer there at all. Um, the answer is going to be 9.09 um, .09 times 10 to the negative um, third molar um, for our hydroxide ion concentration. Then what we're going to do, because we have that, now we have our hydroxide ion concentration at the end, we can do our pOH is equal to the negative log of 9.09 .09 times 10 to the negative third. So our pOH, once again, is going to be 2.04, um, 1. And so we'll subtract 14 from that, or subtract that from 14, I should say, properly. And I'm going to get a pH is equal to 11.959 um, as our answer there. And so there's our pH.